Good morning, friends. I am Ms. Cherry with Ventura County Library. Thank you for joining me today for STEAM Storytime. <clears throat> While we wait for a few more friends to join us, I am going to tell you a silly joke. What does a Triceratops sit on? What does a Triceratops sit on? sit on. It's Tricera Bottom. <laughs> did you know did you know that birds are the closest living descendants of dinosaurs? It's pretty cool, huh? It's true. And we're gonna read today, we're gonna read some stories about birds. Um kind of <laughs> As you'll see, let's start with a song. Let's sing the Days of the Week song. Let's get our hands ready for clapping and sing Days of the Week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday, days of the week. 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 Hey, nice singing friends. Today is Thursday, Steam Storytime Day. Thank you for joining me again. We are going to start today with the book, My Brother, the Duck. Hmm, that sounds strange. Let's see what that's all about. This is, both of our books today are thanks to Chronicle Books, and this book is written by Pat Zaitlo Miller and illustrated by Daniel Weissman. My Brother, The Duck. I'm Stella Wells, fledgling scientist. Scientists notice things, and so do I. Like the fact that my brave baby brother might be a duck. I spotted something odd before he was born. Dad told mom, you're waddling. You must be having a duck. They laughed. I didn't. A baby was bad enough. A duck was unacceptable. Research was obviously required. So when my parents returned from the hospital holding something wrapped in a blanket, I took notes. The thing was scrawny. It was yellow. Its nose was flat and broad. It looked like a duck, but that was only a hypothesis. To prove it, I needed evidence. Mom showed me the bundle. Look, Stella, it's your baby brother, Drake. Oh, he does kind of look like a duck, doesn't he? <laughs> that name seemed noteworthy. Turns out Drake is a fancy word for a boy duck. My first piece of evidence? Check. As soon as I wrote it down, Drake started squawking. Man, could that kid quack. My second piece of evidence? Check. But scientists can't just wing it. They have to gather facts. So I visited my friend, Carla Martinez. She made a volcanoes erupt, pickles glow, and paper clips float. We have a new baby. His name is Drake. I think he's a duck. Carla considered my statement. Male ducks are called drakes, she conceded. Does he quack? You should hear him. Does he have feathers? Not yet, but he's fairly fuzzy. Does he have a bill? I stopped to think. Drake's nose was definitely not normal. I guess so, I said. Carla raised an eyebrow. Scientists don't guess. Further research was obviously required. Back home, 
Drake looked more like a duck than ever. Incredible, I said. But inconclusive, Carla replied. We must consult an expert. We chose Principal Kowalski. She drinks coffee from a duck-shaped mug. She keeps rubber ducks on her desk. She even calls, make way for ducklings, when our class walks down the hall. Uh, Mrs. Kowalski, we were wondering, how can you tell if a baby duck is really, um, you know, a duck? You know what people say, if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it's probably a duck. There it was. An expert had confirmed my hypothesis. I was related to a duck. A waddling, quacking, broad-billed baby duck. I thought about it all day. Where we'd go, what we'd do, it wasn't so bad, really. We could still go fishing. We could still have lunch. Drake's feathers would add a certain flair to every photo. Plus, we'd never ever lose a game of Duck Duck Goose. I hurried home, ready to be the best big sister a duck ever had. Drake was in the bassinet. I looked, he looked rounder and smoother than before. His nose seemed almost normal. That didn't fit the bill. Was all of my research wrong? Just then, Dad waddled by. I dropped my notebook and stared. Long skinny legs, check. Wide webbed feet, check. The greatest, the biggest bill I'd ever seen, check. Full time, he announced, I need to get my wings wet. And with those words, I knew. Stella Wells' fledgling scientist had another hypothesis to test. And that was the end of my brother, the duck. What do you think? Was her brother a duck? Hmm. Think about that one. All right, friends, I think we need to get some wiggles out. This song is not about birds, but it is pretty fun. It's a fun song to sing uh, for mealtime or just if you want a silly song to sing. It's called Knife. So we're going to point over our head like this. Fork, arms by our sides. Spoon, arms over our heads and spatula, arms down, and then cha-cha-cha. Ready? I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. Okay, now let's try to do it as fast as we can. Ready? I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha-cha-cha. Oh, that's a fun song. <laughs> All right, back to the birds. We are going to read our next story. It's called Apples and Robins. Again, thanks to Chronicle Books. And let's see, this is by Lucy Felix. All you need for apples are circles and the color red. Okay, we have red, we have circles. Summer is ending, the apples hang high on my tree, just out of reach. All you need for a ladder are six rectangles, 
five short and one long. Let's see if we can make a ladder. Let's see. Whoa, I made a ladder. And you can climb into the leafy branches and pick an apple. All you need to take a bite are two circles. Okay, we have those. An apple is a circle. An open mouth is a circle. Let's see. Oh, we took a bite out of the apples. But someone else thinks so too. Ooh, what is that? A worm. All you need for a bird are three bright triangles like the robin's whistle and the red oval like its round red breast. Okay, so let's count our triangles. One, two, three. There we go. We have an oval. Let's see what happens. There we go. It will fly away with the worm and sit in my apple tree singing. All you need for a birdhouse are walls and a roof and a little door. Huh. I wonder what happens when we put all these shapes together. Do you think it'll make a birdhouse? Let's see. Cool. And a string to hang it with. Now there's a place for a robin's nest. But all you need for a storm is the wind to blow. And the sky to rumble. Oh, crack. What is that? A lightning bolt. Whoa, oh no, that knocked down the birds and the birdhouse and so many leaves. Oh, what a mess. But we'll rake the leaves and gather the apples. And there's our ladder too. All you need for a basket. Let's see, how can we make this a basket? Oh, there it is. It's an empty place to put things. and all you need for a birdhouse. Let's see, can we make our birdhouse again? Is a hammer and some nails. Okay, good, we have that. I'll climb the ladder and hang the birdhouse and take the apples in to eat. Here's our basket of apples, our leaves, our hammer, the birdhouse, the ladder. All winter long, there will be apples. There will be robins. And one morning, when you are making your breakfast, an egg will crack in the robin's nest. There will be baby robins and apple flowers. And it all begins again. It will be spring. That was apples and robins and spring is not right around the corner, but we are starting to head in that direction, right? So I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can help the birds in your neighborhood get ready for spring and start building their nests. So before spring is a good time to do this. So if you have a whisk that you don't mind giving up for a while, and so this is my whisk, you can fill these spaces with lint, string, um, yarn, anything that you have around your house, little pieces of string, yarn, lint, you just stuff them right into your whisk. And then at the top of your whisk, there's usually a little, a little spot to hang the whisk. So you can loop some string through that. And if you hang this in a tree near your house, or if you don't have a tree near your house, you can just hang it outside your window. Um, 
and then this helps the birds by giving them little pieces of string and lint that help them build their nests for spring. So that's a quick little activity that you can do to help out your birds. Make sure you don't put anything plastic in there. We don't want any plastic string or anything like that. We don't want any more plastic in our ecosystem. We want all natural fibers for our birdie friends. And that's it, my friends. That's our activity for the day. I hope you enjoyed this bird themed story time. And before we go, let's sing our goodbye song. Let's sing bread and butter. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as high as we can. Ah, goodbye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as low as we can. Good bye. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as nice as we can. Goodbye friends. I hope you have a lovely day and we'll see you at the next story time.